Hey Dylan. Oh hey, what's up man? I actually just wrapped up all the mock-ups that we talked about. I made sure to include everything that you mentioned and I got a really good feeling you're gonna dig these. Here, take a look. Hoo wee dang, these are sweet, man. Those bottom ones right there, that is exactly what I was looking for. Awesome, dude. Well, I'm really glad that you like them. So in order to get the ball rolling next, we'll need a 50% deposit up front. Then we can go ahead and get your base shoe ordered and then we'll really be off and running. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that sounds good, man. All right, well, in that case, I will, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know, okay, bud? <sighs> Hey, what's going on guys? Dylan DeHazes here. Welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking all about things that annoy sneaker customizers. Now this is a fun little series that we open up to you guys over on our Instagram and these are some of the funniest submissions that were sent in. Not preparing the shoe before painting it. This is unfortunately a mistake that a lot of beginners make when just starting out. The first shoe I ever painted, I didn't prep at all so I definitely know what you're talking about. However, it doesn't matter what paint you use, it doesn't matter what finisher you choose. Ultimately, if you don't take the time to do your prep work properly, there's no way that shoe's gonna hold up over time. Prep work is by far the most important step to creating a long lasting product. When a client tells me to freestyle and then doesn't like the design that I choose, there's a few different ways that we could try to combat this as artists. One, you could of course have an agreed upon mock-up this way, all parties involved know exactly what's gonna be happening. Or you could at least show them some of your past work that's at least within the same ballpark of where you plan on taking their project. Also, you can definitely send some progress pics along the way just to make sure that they're happy with where you're heading. The last thing you want as an artist is to be paid for a project once, but have to do it twice. When you're starting out new and have zero orders, this is a time where it can be super easy to get frustrated and probably feel like giving up. So my advice to anybody in this situation is try to reach out to your immediate friends and family, people that would be willing to support you on this new venture that you're on and make them something cool that they can wear. Turn them into a walking billboard for you. The custom sneaker space is more competitive than it's ever been. So you're gonna need to continue to try to find your voice, try to find your style, figure out your brand, what's gonna make you unique and stand out from everybody else. And that's what's ultimately gonna help you continue to grow in the industry. When the customer doesn't read shoes provided by customer. Now this is definitely one way to run your custom sneaker business. There's plenty of artists out there who do this where any potential client has to send the shoes into them. All you're paying for is the artwork from the artist. There also might be some type of psychological advantage here because the client in their mind no longer has to pay for the price of the shoes also. So there definitely is something to that, but this is definitely something that you'll probably be explaining over and over to clients if you do opt to run your business this way. When the hairs of the brush are out of control and going in every direction. Now this is something that as artists we know about far too well probably and this is actually how the birth of the toothpick game came to be because I got so sick of my detail brushes constantly fraying I needed to find something that I could control consistently and I stumbled across the toothpick and haven't looked back since. The trials and tribulations of portraits. Now in my opinion realism in painting great portraits is the single hardest thing that you can do as an artist and there is absolutely levels to it but when you can achieve photo quality through your artwork, you've definitely ascended to another level. There is so much that truly goes into pulling off a great portrait. I had to take an entire month off last year just to practice painting portraits every single day. So I know how much hard work goes into these. These definitely don't happen overnight. So a huge shout out to all of the great portrait artists out there. Paint buildup on the nozzle. All of a sudden out of nowhere, your airbrush isn't spraying properly. You were just getting in a rhythm. You take a quick look at the tip and you see you have a bunch of dried up paint on your nozzle. This is actually a super quick fix and one of the least bad things that can happen when it comes to trying to troubleshoot your airbrush. So quick fix, just remove any of that dried up paint. Maybe you need to acetone some of it off or you can quickly peel it off depending on how old it actually is. But something else that has actually helped me is hold down on the trigger the entire time you're working on your project, depending on what you might be doing. But if all you're doing is pressing straight down on the trigger, you're just gonna be releasing air. You're not actually gonna be releasing any paint until you pull back on your trigger as long as your airbrush is flowing properly, but holding down on that trigger and keeping air flowing through the gun can actually help prevent some of that buildup on the nozzle. Prepping the shoe, then realizing it's the wrong size. Now, hopefully not a lot of you have ever experienced this one in the past. I definitely have where something was sent to me. I went ahead and prepped it. And then for whatever reason, I grabbed the box or checked the size and realized it wasn't the right size for the order I had to do. 
and after the prep process it no longer had that factory clean look where I could take it back and return it and exchange it for the size I did need so I had to go ahead and just buy a new one. Customers that have no idea on what the process is. You know what I think will really change this over time as artists is if we can continue to pull back the curtain and let people see what goes into this. If all we're posting on social media is that finished product photo, that final money shot, that's all people are seeing. But when you can peel back that curtain, show some works in progress, show some process videos, let people see what actually goes into these. Now, instead of just seeing the destination, they'll see the journey. They'll see that long winding road on how you actually arrive at that destination and how you come to charging the prices that you do. Airbrush maintenance. I don't think any type of maintenance is fun in general, whether we're referring to keeping our paintbrushes nice and clean or airbrush maintenance, but the last thing we want is to be in the middle of a project or be on a deadline, and then all of a sudden you have to spend an hour or more just trying to get your airbrush flowing again properly. So you definitely wanna make sure you have a good workhorse airbrush, something that can handle daily use and always make sure to clean it when you're done for the day. Leave a little bit of cleaning solution behind and you'll be good to go the next time you're ready to use it. Bleeding under your stencil, therefore creating more work for you, cleaning all that up than you originally planned. Now there's two main things that we could do to try to avoid this. One, make sure you're using the right vinyl for the job and two, whatever color you have underneath your stencil, you wanna lay that down as your first coat on top of this stencil. There's a couple other products out there like the inner coats or even neutral paint that you could lay down as your first coat on top of the stencil. Any of these will do the job for you. Running out of a custom mix color. I want to start by saying what you shouldn't do if you ever find yourself in this situation. A few things that I've seen other artists do in the past is try to add in water into what little paint they have left. This is really going to hurt the strength of the paint. These aren't meant to be mixed with water, so try to avoid that one. Another thing that I've seen some people do is just add in a bunch of tooth in, but this is really going to hurt the viscosity of the paint. I think that's how you say that word. But anyways, it's going to be a little bit too thin for you to actually apply it onto your shoes. Another thing that I have seen some people do that I do think could work but you don't want to overdo it is trying to mix in neutral paint which is clear so it's going to add a little bit more volume but you definitely don't want to overdo it. You wouldn't want to have a mixture that's 90% neutral and only 10% of your original paint color. So definitely don't overdo it if you do plan on adding in a little bit of neutral paint to try to thicken up and add a little bit more volume to your mixture. If I send them to you today, will you have them done by the end of the week? You gotta love those clients who reach out to you and happen to think that they're the only client in the world hitting you up for work right now. And there's no possible way you have anything else going on on your plate right now. Most of the time they don't mean any harm. However, we're all just so spoiled with how instant everything is nowadays. Everybody wants everything right away, regardless of the business, but this is a custom luxury item, so there's definitely gonna be a wait period. All right, guys, so those are some of the most common things that we deal with as artists on a daily basis. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please be sure to go ahead and give it a like if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed, and everybody get out there and just create.